Okay, now during this week we'll be looking at access control. Access control could be defined as policy driven restriction. Policy driven restriction in terms of limiting the use of resources. So, what I mean by this is uh, when you're trying to do access control, it's the best for you not to actually try to restrict or limit the use of resources in an ad hoc manner. By doing that, you may be making a lot of users unhappy and also you can keep people from working on what they need to work on. So it can affect productivity therefore access control has to be well planned from the very beginning and also also it has to go through an appropriate chain of command and therefore uh, it has to be approved by the senior management of an organization. Another thing to remember is access control is not really the same as cryptography uh, cryptography is one of the ways implementing access control especially in a technical or logical manner because there are many different ways of actually implementing access control in addition to the technological or logical way such as cryptography. Some of the uh, examples of access control include things like physical barriers, passwords, or biometrics. So these are some of the examples of how to implement access control in reality. Access control is a type of a countermeasure and countermeasures could be preventive, detective, and reactive. So since access control is kind of a countermeasure, access control itself can be also preventive, detective, and reactive. So when we say preventive, what we mean by that is we're trying to keep any threat, especially in terms of uh, access control, from getting materialized. So we're trying to prevent any compromise. So in terms of access control, that's what we mean by being preventive or preventative. And then uh, when we say detective, this assumes that an attack has already happened and either in the middle of it or after the attack we are realizing either the attack is underway or the attack has already happened so if we don't know whether an attack has happened then there's nothing we can do about it so being able to detect an attack and dealing with it is another role of a countermeasure and also access control. And then when a compromise has already happened, the only thing you can do is pretty much something after the fact. So that's what we call reactive. So when we say detective, as I said earlier, it could include both attacks underway and we're detecting it and attack that has already happened and then we're discovering that we were under attack so sometimes we could categorize things that way but at the same time I mean we could only make detective mean that we're detecting something underway in terms of an attack and then when it comes to an attack that has already happened and us doing something after that using a countermeasure especially with access control 
uh, we could call it reactive. However, detective could be both. So in CISSP certification, I think they use another term which is corrective. And in this case, corrective actually means that you are trying to recover from an attack and trying to get back to normal as soon as possible. So basically taking an action against an attack or an incident or a compromise and getting back to normal by using a countermeasure in this case. So the countermeasures and access control methods could come in these three different forms preventive, detective, and reactive. So now you understand what we mean by being corrective. So another way of doing the categorization is preventive, detective, and corrective. So one way is preventive, detective, reactive. Another way is preventive, detective, and corrective. We can categorize access control based on the role it plays. For example, it could be playing the role of a deterrent, meaning by employing access control, you could keep an incident actually from happening. So in that sense, it's similar to preventative when we were talking about countermeasures. So that's what we mean by deterrent. And the next is recovery. In this case, access control focuses more on getting back to normal. So in that sense, it's similar to corrective in our discussion of different types of countermeasures. So when we say deterrent, very good example of uh, deterrent, access control could be something like a firewall because it prevents a bad packet from getting into your network and it prevents the bad packet from causing any damage. In terms of recovery, a very good example of recovery related access control could be a way to back up data and restore it after an incident. So in that sense it's similar to corrective in our discussion of countermeasures. However, I think recovery is more specializing in getting back to normal than just being corrective. Now the next one is directive type of access control. In this case, access control is focusing on being compliant to security policies out there and the access control effort is made by the management and by educating and training their employees. The management could be directive in terms of access control because it encourages its employees to really comply with the existing security policies. So a good example of directive access control could be things like setting up a security policy, doing a training session, or doing a security awareness campaign and so on. Finally, compensation in terms of access control means doing something in addition to an existing access control countermeasure. So in addition to an existing access control countermeasure or in place of an existing access control countermeasure. So a good example could be you already have encryption when it comes to storing your data in your organization However, let's say you're not really encrypting the data when the data is going from one site to the other 
or when the data is being transmitted over a uh, network. So in that case, in addition to the existing countermeasure, you have to introduce a additional countermeasure to improve security. So that type of thing could be considered compensation related access control and let's say an existing for example access control is not doing its job for example you have a firewall that is not doing its job and you want to replace it with a better one in that case again that type of access control countermeasure could be considered compensation access control can be categorized into different types based on how it is implemented too. For example, the first type could be administrative or management control and what we mean by this is access control efforts dealing with human factors such as dealing with your personnel in your company or business practices or processes in your organization. So this is more human oriented type of effort you're making in terms of access control. Another type of access control based on implementation is logical or technical control where you focus more on the technology problems both related to either hardware or software so just to give you an example hardware based access control could be purchasing a new intrusion detection system housed in an appliance software based access control could be installing an antivirus program. Finally, the last type of access control based on implementation could be physical control, which means doing something about physical security. So in this case, you could try to somehow improve security in terms of your physical parameter of the place you're trying to protect by erecting obstacles, making sure you have a man trap in your entrance of the building you're in, and so on. So as you can see, since there are so many different types of access control, when we're talking about how it is implemented, the best practice is really not to just use any one of these in an isolated manner but when you try to use all these different types of access control at the same time in layers that's probably the best practice out there so in a phrase we call it defense in depth when these different types of access control methods are used all at the same time.